This video gives a brief introduction about inter-symbol interference, that is ISI, the role of pulse shaping and achieving sort of zero ISI using the Nyquist criterion. So let us consider a scenario where a person is using his cell phone to communicate and the data is in binary form, that is ones and zeros. This is achieved by analog to digital conversion. Now we use pulse shaping, that is we assign certain voltages for a specific time. This is by means of line coding. Here we assign a voltage level of 1 for time t, say for bit 1, and for bit 0 the voltage level will be reversed. Now the person is in uplink communication and he is connected with the access point. For simplicity let us ignore modulation here and assume that S of T will be sent. This signal will directly reach access point under line of sight conditions. The signal can also be reflected from building before reaching access point. Let us call the channel response that is H of T between line of sight and non line of sight links as a sum. The line of sight is simply delta of T that is a direct delta function considered for simplicity over here where non line of sight is alpha delta of t minus tau here tau is the delay caused because of longer path while alpha is due to propagation losses the received signal at the access point is simply a convolution of s of t with h of t and from the properties of delta function S of T will have two copies from the two paths. The red copy is from the non line of sight refracted path. Hence, because of delay, the signal is smeared. The signal is now also projected beyond its allocated time t. Note that the time slots beyond t are for other pulses. Hence, the present signal will cause an interference with the subsequent symbols. This phenomenon is called inter-symbol interference and it is not a desired phenomenon. Now for pulse shaping we have used a rectangular pulse here. Let us further analyze and see if this pulse is of appropriate choice. Now for the rectangular signal S of T, so we consider its Fourier transform which is simply a sync function. The so sync function in frequency domain has a bandwidth of infinity which is undesirable and we need to operate in our licensed and allowable spectrum band. So one way to fix is by using a low pass filter. Herein we have considered an ideal low pass filter. But as we achieve a band limited spectrum of S of F, signal in time domain will have a long tail and in fact it will reach infinity in time hence the smearing effect that is isi will increase therefore we need a scheme which ensures minimum bandwidth with zero or very low isi so this brings us to the scheme which is proposed by nyquist and it states that for zero isi the signal pulses P of t shall have a value of 1 at t equal to 0 and it shall have a value of 0 for integer multiples of n of tb where tb is the separation between successive transmitted pulses. Of the several possible options let us assume this wave which have a value of 1 at 0 and it has 0 crossing at integer multiples of tb. This pulse is satisfying the criterion and causes zero ISI at all remaining pulse centers or signaling instants. But is this bandwidth efficient scheme and we need zero ISI with minimum bandwidth. So basically the minimum bandwidth with zero ISI is simply a sync function in time domain. It has a value of one at t equal to zero and zero crossings at tb which is time period of a bit or we can say this is tb is equal to 1 over rb where rb is simply the rate. Now if we take the Fourier transform of this sync function we obtain a rectangular function in the frequency domain. 
So sync function enables us to send multiple pulses, RB pulses per second and at sampling instance. So we will have zero ISI. Also the minimum bandwidth of RB by two is achieved. That is over here, if we have a bandwidth of one hertz, so we can send two bits, two binary bits. But is the minimum bandwidth practical? Let us find out. The minimum bandwidth of pulse is not feasible because the pulse starts from minus infinity and it is until eternity. So we cannot generate that kind of a pulse. Now, if we are to truncate it, so truncating it in time would increase its bandwidth beyond RB by two hertz. That was the minimum bandwidth criterion for the Nyquist based zero ISI system. Furthermore, this pulse decays rather slowly at a rate of one by two, causing some serious practical problems. So this rate of one by T is coming from the sync function, which is simply sine of T by T. So this will have an effect in terms of timing jitter. That is if we have a small perturbation from the sampling instant of integer multiples of TB, the side tails of other pulses can sum up to corrupt the pulse detection. Hence the solution required is to find a pulse P of T which decays faster than one by T, albeit it satisfies Nyquist's first criterion for zero ISI. For such, let us consider again the frequency and the time plots for the minimum bandwidth spectrum. Let us introduce a variable alpha and assign it a value of zero. In time domain, we will have a sync pulse which is not practical as discussed earlier. Back in the spectrum plot, we allow a gradual transition rate by adopting alpha to 0 0.5. Here the bandwidth is rolled off to 0 0.75 RB, that is beyond RP by 2. In time domain pulse, the tail will lose strength and the decay rate is much faster than 1 by T as compared to alpha equal to 0 case. So this is what was desired that we need a rate of decay much faster than 1 by T. Now for the extremum case, let us set the value of alpha equal to one and the bandwidth has increased to RB. For this, the pulse is having a very small tail as shown by the green waveform. Hence the constant alpha used herein is simply called the roll off factor and it is having a range of zero to one. So basically it is the trade off factor between bandwidth and the, the strength of tail in the time plot. So herein we can assume that fx defines an excess bandwidth that is bandwidth beyond RB by 2. So we have three cases. In the first case fx is simply RB by 2 for value of alpha equal to 1. So this is the maximum allowable bandwidth under the Nyquist criterion. Next, we have fx which is equal to rb by 4 for alpha value of 0 0.5. And lastly, we will not have any excess bandwidth when we set the value of alpha equal to 0. So in terms of frequency, the theoretical minimum bandwidth is rb by 2 hertz. And the excess bandwidth is fx which is equal to alpha rb by 2 hertz. Hence, the transmission bandwidth Bt is simply the minimum bandwidth that is rb by 2 and fx that is excess bandwidth which is alpha rb by 2. So this is simplified as 1 plus alpha times rb by 2. But what sort of spectrum is this? Let us try to understand this analytically. A family of spectra that satisfies the Nyquist first criterion is the raised cosine. Herein the spectrum shown on right is just the right sided of a double sided spectrum which is symmetric. P of f will have a value of 1 for a certain range of f and it will have a value of 0 for the tail range of f. 
In the middle, we have a case which ensures a monotonic roll off and it is one minus sign of an argument that is approaching sort of a raised cosine and hence the name. The spectrum shall always be symmetric across RB by 2. This is a necessary condition of Nyquist criterion observed in the frequency domain and it is to ensure a consistent value in the magnitude spectrum. Let us observe this further by a simple analysis. Consider a pulse P of T which is our sync function. Let us sample this by multiplying with an impulse strain. The resultant signal is simply delta of t. Analytically, the pulse P of t times 1 over time period of a bit, that is Tb, and a sum of all integer values of n. So this multiplication yields delta of t. So by taking the Fourier transform, 1 over Tb is constant and is unaffected and we have multiple copies of p of f placed at 0 and integer values of integer multiple values of rb lastly the Fourier transform of a delta function is simply 1 hence in the spectrum plot as one copy of the spectrum of p of f falls down other is rising and the sum will always yield a constant value which is tb this is simply a nyquist criterion of the zero isi observed in the frequency domain and this is dual with the time domain criterion observed earlier